Hi, rock and roll educators. It's Barb. It's Tuesday, which means it's our Tuesday training tools day. As always, I hope everyone is having a fantastic week and I'm so looking forward to continuing our studies of the prepared adult, which is our March theme. This month, we get to take the time to do a lot of deep self reflections. And this is extremely important especially during COVID, especially when we're hitting that year mark of the anniversary of COVID and everything that has gone on this year. Um, really important that we're always embarking in this self-awareness journey, but I think more so than ever um, this month alone. And so, you know, we, we do this for a lot of reasons. Um, First, we know we can't serve others if we ourselves are not taken care of. It's extremely hard to walk into a classroom and take care of other children when your own needs are being met. And how do you meet your own needs? You have to reflect on them. You have to communicate them. You have to acknowledge them. And that takes time. And sometimes we're so busy as educators that we don't carve out that time for ourselves. And then we can kind of get into these cycles of you know um, frustration or questioning if this is the right um, the right career for me or you know losing that spark that interest that maybe you once had. Um, so I hope if nothing else this month it, you are taking some time to to have some more self reflection and and look at your teaching practice. Um, the teacher is the most important part of our curriculum of our program. It's not the materials. It's not our curriculum framework. <laughs> um, it's the teacher. You're the one that's responsible for preparing the environment, for observing the children, and then guiding them based on that observation. You're the one that helps build the curriculum. You are the one that really guides everything. Um, and it can be a lot. <laughs> and it has been a lot. Um, that is a universal feeling for all educators, wherever you are, um, that the, this last year, we, we haven't had time to recover from something that was very traumatic and that happened um, so quickly and then did not quickly go away and that we're still dealing with a, a year later. Um, so in your reflections, I do hope you give yourself some self-compassion when thinking about what we've been through the last year. Um, and I think the easiest way for me when I think of self-compassion is what would I be telling a friend if I were sharing with them how I'm feeling? Does that make sense? <laughs> so um, if, I, if I heard a friend reflecting the thoughts that I have about my current situation, what advice would I give that friend? And then I give that advice to myself because sometimes I find it easier to give that help to someone else than myself. So I have to reframe how I, I look at that question and how I, I find um, meaningful ways to, to help myself in situations, okay? So last week we studied um, the, the, the teacher cycle of development and I wanted to start the month out there because I wanted you to get a good sense. I think it's a great starting point when you are reflecting and it gives you a perspective of where you are personally, where your team, you know, your co-teacher is and how that is working and maybe not working in favor and what you can do to, you know, fix that. If you're both brand new, there are some good things, there are some bad things. If you have one, you know, seasoned teacher and one that, you know, um, just started, maybe that's a good thing. There's no right or wrong combination when we're talking about the cycle of the adult learner, but that, that you know, initial acknowledgement of, oh, this is where I am. And, oh, this is what's natural to be found at this stage. Um, and I think it's most important in stage two, when we talked about it's kind of that period where like you felt like things were going good, but now you're questioning some stuff. And the big takeaway from stage two was to find a mentor um, and, and really help you gather those answers of what the questions you have so you can navigate it successfully and continue your, your teacher journey. Um, and also what we'll do today is we're going to talk a little bit about goal setting. And I, 
I especially like this for this month because maybe we are in this like spring is on the horizon, vaccines are starting to roll out. There's the, the light at the end of the tunnel is getting a little brighter each day. So what better time than to really think about what are my next meaningful steps as an educator? What do I want to proactively be doing? So I can, now that I know the, the teacher cycle of development, maybe I'm ready for the next step, or maybe I'm pretty comfortable where I'm at and I wanna set some goals to get a little more foundation of where I am. Again, no right or wrong answer, but acknowledging it and realizing where you are and how those goals are gonna help you um, is very important in terms of your own professional growth um, and personal growth as well. So I'm just gonna pull up a couple questions that we can reflect on together. Okay, let's see. So some goal settings. So when you're thinking about goal setting, I want you to first start and think, what are your strengths as an educator? Even if you're brand new, you're gonna have a strength. You were called into this, this line of work for a reason and it's most likely because you love to work with children or there's something else that you bring. What is it? What is that strength? What gives you that confidence when you think of yourself as a teacher? Everyone has it. And it's really important that we highlight it and we understand what it is so it can help guide our journey. The next question I want you to think about are, what are some unique qualities um, that you bring to your learning environment? We're all different and that's why I love our philosophy in particular is that we welcome this creativity. We do not have a set uh, curriculum or um, you know, a set way of teaching. We embrace these differences and these unique qualities to make learning very personalized, both for the, not only for the child, but for the teacher as well. So they can be having their teaching style, um, again, highlighted so they can um, bring their best practice to the classroom or the home environment every day. But realizing what those unique qualities will really help guide that. Then I want you to think what's one goal, or maybe you have a few, it could be two or three, but start simple because I know we have a lot going on. What's one goal that you have uh, for developing your teaching practice? Always should be something in your mindset that maybe I want to read some more books, or maybe I want to look into, you know, taking a course or watching a different YouTube video or following a different Instagram account that's going to, you know, give me bite-sized uh, pieces of information that I can follow, but something that's going to help develop your teaching practice um, and think about that one goal. Okay. And then what do you need in order to accomplish these goals? You know, if you set that goal now think, okay, now what, how do I set myself up to make sure that I can obtain these goals? Is there something I need to communicate to my co-teachers? Is this a, you know, a, more of a personal goal than I have to be better about my time management so I can figure out when I can weave this in? Um, if, if I feel like I have a lack of time, should I put a timer of how much time I'm scrolling through my phone on Instagram or social media to then give myself time on the other end to, to be practicing um, these goals? So just be thinking what you need um, to accomplish the goals. All right. And then I want you to think about, you know, what areas of teaching do you struggle we all do. There's, there's not a perfect teacher on this planet. There are teachers that have some really great strengths and with those strengths are areas that they struggle. And again, we acknowledging where that struggle is or where um, maybe it's not your favorite part of teaching, um, acknowledging it is going to help you um, and your team um, build your, your programming around your classroom in in a more efficient and stronger manner because you're aware of where you do struggle. Uh, for me, organizing materials, not my biggest strength, but that's a really important part of Montessori. So I make sure that when I was in the classroom, I would share that with my co-teacher and she would help me with the bin organization to make sure that we can be having a nice, healthy rotation. Uh, super important to our philosophy, but it's an area that I struggled with um, as in many other areas as well. But again, acknowledging it so then you can help put the, the supports and then which comes to our next question, what do you need in order to grow in this area? Um, and, and thinking about asking for that help or, or that support. 
Um, and then is there anything your team can do to support you um, in your professional growth for your classroom? Um, these questions can be really hard to reflect on at a time like this when you're just feeling so empty and so burnt and so just like, oh, I don't even know the adjectives that you could do. But if you start to slowly think about them and think more long-term, because again, we're, we're, the light is getting brighter at the end of that tunnel and there is more hope. So if we can start getting back into this mindset of what do I want? What do I need? And how, I'm gonna, how am I gonna get there? What little tiny habits am I going to put in throughout the day to maybe, you know, help me, you know, feel rejuvenated or feel um, that passion again that I once felt for teaching? Or if I feel that passion and I'm, I'm feeling great, but I see another coworker who may be struggling, how do I help infuse passion for them? How do I help guide them? What are some ways that, you know, we're all part of our, this community. We're all in it together. Um, so it's going, you know, throughout that cycle of uh, the teacher, um, excuse me, the teacher cycle of development, it's always going to be a little give and take from people in different stages. So again, it's the, the key there though, is the acknowledgement and the sharing and that, that open communication. So I'll start with those questions. You don't have to share them with me this week. This is something personal and I'd rather you take the time to really reflect it on your own. Um, I'll trust that you'll either write it in your, your journal or on a piece of paper, maybe in your phone, wherever it is the most convenient for you. And I'll let you, you know, I'll let you guide it, whatever is going to fit into your, your lifestyle now, but does, it won't be a reflection question that comes back for me. Um, I am open if you do want some support, if you need some ideas, if you do want to share it, that will always be an option. Um, but I want to respect that everyone has a different approach to how they, they are setting goals. And I know it can be a personal thing. So I just want to give you that space. Um, so again, I really do. I hope I encourage you to participate in this, even if you are feeling extremely empty and burnt, um, just think of these as, as the stepping stones to where we can get to a brighter future and be looking back at this time as, wow, we made it. <laughs> that was pretty incredible. And I'm pretty proud that I'm part of that, that story that helped you know children through a time that was nearly impossible and gave them normalcy um, and a quality education. That is really something to be feeling proud of. So um, thank you for all that you do. Uh, I say that with a sincere heart and, um, and know that your team is here for you. We want to help you and we want to get you to a, the, the best part of your journey that exists for you. Um, so always know that you can reach out and, and ask us or um, share any reflections that you want. Um, I look forward to any feedback and I will see you here again next week where we'll continue our conversation about you and your journey. I can't wait. Bye everyone. Have a great night.